Good morning, everybody. My name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a Techno Trainer for McNeil, and this is Getting Started Rhino for Mac. So um, the the first thing that we're going to start with here is this is this sketch, and I I just imported this using the picture command and placed it in the in the modeling viewport. And the idea behind this is I want this to be something that I can use for reference, but I also don't want it to be in the center of my modeling window. So uh, if I happen to throw something in the center of this model, you can see, especially in shaded view, it gets really kind of in the way because the sketch is bisecting the model. So what I like to do is just slide this back in space so that it still works in front view, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't impede my progress as far as working on this thing. So this this little coffee grinder, salt and pepper shaker, pepper mill, whatever you want to call it, a little doodad with a handle on top of it. We're going to start with um, this basic form. And if you look at it, the concept behind this is that it kind of goes. From, so we're going to start from a square shape to a circular cross section, and then a bottom square cross section. So we're going to actually change shape and change phase through this thing. And then we're gonna we're gonna adjust this center section up and down to kind of change the proportion and get something that we're gonna like. So this is the this is the you know communication sketch I do to myself, and uh, and basically it's it's just something I throw into the model window in order to get myself started. And you can see from the sketch I did not spend very much time on it. I think that's very clear. Um, but the goal is to just kind of figure out and start thinking about and planning what I'm going to do in 3D because the, the the goal of this is to design this product in 3D, not necessarily to design it in 2D. I spent maybe five minutes on this sketch tops just to get a general idea and then we're going to work out the specifics, the proportions and all that kind of stuff in 3D and make our decisions on a real model in real space so that we can have something that we can actually hold in our hand when we're done as opposed to you know, spending hours sweating the sketch and designing any last little detail, which you have the luxury of doing if you're the designer who's actually building the model, as opposed to, you know, being the designer that you hand off to a model, or in that case, you'd have to have a much more defined sketch. Um, first question is, is there any way, special way that you calibrated the image for size? Um, let me finish placing the image and then I'll show you that. Um, so the first, the first thing we did was we placed it in the model window. We snuck it back in space here so it's out of the way. The next thing I'm going to do is pick it and I'm going to go to the materials tab here and you can see that there is a material loaded in the modeling window already that is, that is our sketch here. And that is uh, that this material because when we pick it, you can see that it lights up and says in the corners, this little yellow indicator says that this is actually what we've picked. And so I'm going to just drag this transparency slider up a little bit and make the sketch more transparent so that in my modeling window, when I draw over it, I can actually see my line work instead of having the, the, the contrast of the sketch occlude what I'm doing, which would be a little bit more difficult to work with. So I've got this faded out. It's more of a suggestion of a sketch at this point as opposed to uh, as opposed to actual reference. And then uh, to to the question that was asked as far as as far as as far as scaling this, I'm going to just place a line at zero. And then let's say this thing is about six inches tall. I'm just going to make a polyline that's six inches tall. And then I'm going to just make a little make a little reference line in here. And then what I'll do is scale the image from zero to match that line. So now I know that my object is about six inches long and that gives me a general reference as far as scale. All right. Once I've got that, once I've got that nailed down, what I'm going to do is go to my layers palette over here and I'm going to actually change the name of this to sketch. And then I'm going to right pick the object, right click, and I'm going to move the object to this layer. And then I'm going to lock it. Once it's locked, it's placed in the modeling window. It's not going anywhere. And I know 
that uh, that I can work over it and use it as reference as needed. And the reason that I layer it is because I can turn it on and off anytime I want. If I needed more images in the scene, like say if I had more views of this, I would simply just copy this image, paste it. I'd make a second layer that says sketch two, sketch three, sketch four. I would place each one of those sketches on a on a separate layer, and then that way I could turn them on and off as I needed and keep them keep the clutter and the modern modeling window down as much as possible. All right. So this object basically is a pretty simple shape, and the fact that it starts from kind of a rounded square, goes to a circle, and then goes down to a rounded square. And I'm assuming that uh, the designer, meaning me, intended the top and the bottom to be the same, basically the same shape. And we'll play with that because we can. But let's let's just go ahead and start laying this out. And I'm going to start with I'm going to start with a center rectangle, uh, center to corner, and then I'm going to actually use the rounded option here. And I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to just place it in the front view, which seems counterintuitive, but I can always rotate it later. Uh, that's a super easy thing to do. And so once I click, I can decide what my corners look like, and I'm going to place that there. I'm going to go to the perspective view. And I'm going to use Gumball to just rotate it 90. I'm going to go to the front view. I'm going to start dragging and I'm going to tap the option key. You see that little green plus shows up. And I'm going to drag that up here to place a second square. So I've got basically the top and the bottom on this. The next thing I'm going to do is place a circle at center. And I'm going to just place that at zero and I'm going to drag it. I'm going to hold down shift because I want to constrain it to uh, so that the, the seam is facing at uh, 90 degrees. And I'm going to just place that there. I'm going to go to my perspective view again. And I'm going to just lift it up somewhere in the middle here. And we'll figure out the way along the way. All right, so now I've got the basis of my object. I can simply just come through here and loft these three objects together. Oops, got to pick them in order. One, two, three. Look at the seam and just decide whether that's a logical place for the seam to be. And I actually would prefer if the seam was at the midpoint. So I'm actually going to drag these points. to be right at the midpoint. That way, this is a little bit better organized. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and run it. And you'll see that I get a nice blending shape from one to the other, all right? I'm not gonna simplify it because the shape of this actually is pretty simple as it start as it is. So I'm just gonna run it like that and get my, get my shape, okay? So, You'll see that what it did was it actually made a polysurface because all of these objects were basically uh, simplified, simplified curves. If I had rebuilt this circle, if I had allowed this to rebuild, let's take a look at that. And if I were to allow this to rebuild, you can see that it 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 doesn't break it up into a polysurface, but you can also see that it's not terribly accurate to the, to the shape. And in order to get it to be accurate to the shape, I'd have to bring this up quite a bit and add a lot more complexity to that shape. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna simplify it. I'm gonna just let it run. And I am gonna go back and I'm just gonna go back. Oops. just going to go back to my original loft because I'm pretty happy with that as it sits. So and I'll have to see maybe the, the undo may have killed my history, which it looks like it did. Why midpoint? The midpoint is a good place to, um, to just locate everything because I've got a midpoint on each, each one of these objects. It's an, it's an easy locator for me to be able to figure out where to put the scene. So let's do it again because I lost my history. I want to make sure that history is on. And let's loft again. When we loft with history, it gives us an opportunity to iterate and do some form finding. So I'm going to just drag this again to midpoint.
and I'm going to just let it run normal, all that stuff. And now what I can do is I can say, well, do I like the shape? And if I do like the shape, that's great. If I don't, I can iterate with it by scaling this circle and decide how much curvature do I want in the sides of this thing. And I'm holding down shift to scale that. Or I can move it up or down to change the bias of how that thing is going to roll. But I kind of like it somewhat centered, maybe a little, maybe a little bottom bias. Sorry, I'm going to pause again. So maybe a little bottom bias to give this thing a little bit more weight at the top and a little less at the bottom. And then we're going to take a look at this and see how we feel about that. So let's go into let's go into rendered mode and see how we feel about this. And I don't know if you can see this. Let's put a material on this, but there's actually a, a little uh, discontinuity going on in here that I'm not I'm not in love with. So let's let's just do this as a gray so that we can see it. You see this discontinuity right here? See this? I'm not in love with that. So let's let's figure out how to fix that. And that's coming from the fact that we're using degree two curves here. So let's let's rebuild this into a degree three curve. We don't need 2,500 points, but let's just go ahead and use eight. We're gonna raise it from degree two to degree three. And then let's look at these and let's see what we need to do to rebuild those. And you can see that, I don't know if you can see this or not because my screen is yellow. At, at eight points, we're not really capturing what we need. So let's go up to like 16 and see how that works. That's a little bit better, but we may even need to go a little bit higher, like 24. That seems to be holding our shape a little bit better, so let's go ahead and rebuild to that. Now let's run our loft again and see what we get. We've got to get all three of them. You can drag select it and Rhino should sort it out. And in this case, you can see that the seam is just a little bit off center still. So I'm going to run this over here. And in this case, that quadrant snap seems to be a pretty good spot to run to. And let's run that. And we're going to get a more complicated surface, but the the quality of it is going to be a little bit better. And you can see that if we assign a material to this and we look at it in rendered view, that discontinuity is now gone. And it's a much smoother surface. So I think I'm happy with that. I think we're going to roll with that. So let's look at, let's go back to shaded view. And then let's, we should be able to play with the bias a little bit more. And I think for the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that actually is a little bit more. What do you think, top weighted or bottom weighted? I think this is one of the nice things about history is you can play with it and decide what you want it to do. I'm just holding the shift key to scale this. Ooh, that's a little crazy. I think something kind of something kind of in there seems to feel right to me. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got. So we've got this nice surface built in here, and we can work with that. All right, so let's take a look and see like what else kind of details do we need to build. And it looks like there's there's a slight rise in this where it, it comes up. Actually, it looks like it 
the sketch is super asymmetrical. So it looks like we've kind of we kind of come up from here and then roll over. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this top curve and I'm going to raise it up because I think I'm going to integrate this shape into the body. And then what I want to build since this is going in the other direction is I'm going to build that separately. So I'm going to just use this as an opportunity to put a cut line in here and then I'm going to build off of the top of this. So let's grab here and let's drag up tap option. That's going to give us a copy of that curve. So we always want to beg, borrow, and steal when it comes to modeling. Not, not in life, but modeling, beg, borrow, steal, that's fine. And then I'm going to scale this in holding down shift on the handle to get that little reveal in there. And then I'm going to use a circle in the top of this, which I can steal from here. I know it's already centered. I know it's already rebuilt. I know it already does what I want it to do. So I'm going to tap option, bring it up here, and then shift drag to scale it down. And that's going to give me the setup that I need in order to be able to do this next part which we should be able to do with a loft again. And if it doesn't work, we'll do something different. There's other ways to do this too. We could have done this with a one rail sweep. We could have done this with a two rail sweep. We could have done, you know, there's a bunch of different ways that we could have done the surface, but um, loft, is, loft is cheap and easy. So we'll go ahead and run with it. So let's run the loft again and see how we do. I'm gonna go from here to here to here. And I'm gonna use the curve instead of the surface edge. And you can see that we have a little bit of a pillow going on there, which I don't love that. So I think we can play with we can play with some settings and see if that's going to change anything, but I don't think that's going to be the case. So I think let's build this in a couple of pieces. So let's go from here to here. And you can see that we get a much different shape out of that. In fact, I'm not in love with that either, actually. See how it's not really, it doesn't quite give us that, that shape that we want. So we could either put an intermediary curve between here. We could use tween to actually get a difference, uh, you know, the, the midpoint curve in here if we wanted to. But I think I'm going to just use a different, I think I'm going to just use a different method. I think I'm going to start with a straight line and I'm going to snap from the quad here to kind of the quad here. And the reason I use the straight line is because it's super easy. And then what I'm gonna do is use the change degree command. And it's a degree one curve right now, which means it's only got two points. If I switch this to a degree three, you can see when I turn the points on that I have four perfectly spaced points here, which is really nice to work with. So I can pull this up. If I want to make this point tangent, I can basically pull this up here. I can relocate my gumball to this point, and then I can use gumball to snap there. If these two points are lined up, which they are because there's no scale handle here, then I know that it's going to be tangent at this point, right? Because tangency is basically just two points lined up. And I can adjust that tangency. I can come in closer which makes a little sharper fall off, or I can pull it out, which makes it a little softer fall off. So that's how I can adjust that. So these two points need to be lined up in order for it to be tangent rolling around the center point there. This point I can play with, I can do whatever I want. I can pull this up here, I can pull this down here. It doesn't matter because it doesn't affect the tangency. But I think for the most part, I'm gonna just let it fall off naturally like that and go from there. So let's use, Let's use a two rail sweep since we have two rails and it is down here. And we're going to let that just be a closed sweep, which is set down here. And you'll notice that we get a little bit of variation in this. I don't know if you can see that kind of up and down, which we may be able to deal with in point editing. So let's go ahead and run it. In fact, let's rebuild it and see 
if that gives us any better. Looks like we get about the same result anyway, so we'll go ahead and run it as is. And then let's take a look at the points. And for the most part, I think it's in good shape. Although, I don't know if you can see this or not, but see how this row of points right here, see how it goes up and down? That's where that variation is coming from. So let's fix that. Let's, this one we know, I'm going to use cell U. This one we know is flat. There's no handle here, right? If I grab this one and sell you, see how there's a scale handle there? I'm going to click that and scale to zero, which is going to flatten that, flatten that point, that ring of points right out. And then I'm going to take those points and using gumball, I'm going to snap them to that ring. So we know that this whole, this whole thing right here is all flat, right? No scale handle, so we know that it's flat. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to just do sell you. And this is the beauty of NURBS modeling here because it's like we got close with the tools and then we can go back in and point edit this stuff to get exactly what we want. So now this one's dead flat. I'm going to do the same thing here. See a little scale handle? I'm just going to take that out and flatten all those out. And now we get a much better surface. Let me add a material to that. See that? See how clean that is now? So don't get frustrated if the surfacing tools don't give you exactly what you want the first time you use them. You're more than welcome to go in later and, and mess with them and do what you want. In fact, we've got enough points here we could actually do some sculpting stuff on this if we wanted to. If we grab two points here, we can start adding you know, maybe it's got a little locator detail on it where there's a handle that detents into it or something like that. We can always add that stuff later. So the surfacing tools are just to get you started. The rest of the stuff is, is to uh, all the rest of the point editing tools and stuff are to get you the rest of the way. All right, I'm going to hide these curves. And then I need to figure out how to attach these two together. And I think the best way to do that is probably using a blend surface. And the blend surface, I always have to go looking for it on the Mac. Uh, here it is, blend surface. I'm going to just go from edge to edge here. And what, what it does is you can see that in this case, it throws a tangent, a curvature uh, blend in there. I, and I think that's a little aggressive. I don't think I need to go full curvature. And I also don't want it to blend perfectly into two. So I'm actually going to switch two to position. And then you can see that my tangency is now going to be just calculated off of edge one. And then I've got position off of edge two. So I'm going to run that. And then we've got our nice little top on that thing. So I'm going to join these together. And then I'm going to make, put a planar surface in the top to finish this thing off. And that gives us basically the finishing part of our shape. So I'm going to go back to shaded view because rendered view is kind of hard to work in and see what's going on. And so now we've got the basis of our body. I'm going to just put a cap on the bottom of this thing. Join that up. And then I can decide, do I want this to be super sharp? Or do I want this to have like a little blend or something on the end of it? And it looks to me like the way I had originally drawn this, it has a little return on it. So I'm actually going to go backwards one step. And I'm going to extract this surface. We'll go to the front view. I'm going to pull it down a little bit. And then I'm going to shift drag it to scale it in. And then I can either loft, or if I want to get the fillet for free, I'll just do a blend surface. And I'm going to get rid of my interior shapes. That's a little bit more detail than I need. 
And I'm going to let surface two be positioned, but I'm going to crank this back a little bit so that it still has a nice blending transition, but I'll get a little sharpness and then I'll get a little softness down here and we'll we'll play off that that sharp and smooth and all that kind of stuff. Then we can join this back up. And we've got the basis of our object. Now there's a couple of things that this thing needs. It needs a little drawer to be able to pull stuff out and, and things like that. But let's go ahead and finish the exterior and then we can start playing with the details. Any questions so far? Again, feel free to, to jump in and, and uh, ask anything that you need to ask. So the handle has a little circular detail on the top of it and it, and it roughly corresponds with the size of this circular object right here. So I'm going to shift command. This is a this is a poly surface. It's all joined. I'm going to shift command click, which is a sub object selection on that on that object. I'm going to start draw, dragging it up and I'm going to tap alt or option and that plus sign is going to show up and that's going to give me a copy of that surface. And so I'm going to steal that surface and then I'm going to use the little extruder to extrude that up and then I'm going to shift command click and I'm going to start dragging on a handle and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to just make that a little bit bigger. See that? And this works well because this is a degree one surface. So that type of sub object selection and editing is really effective at this point. All right, so let's take a look at how to build the rest of the handle here. So this thing is basically just an extruded profile. I'm going to just go ahead and draw it out. My ortho snap is on, which I don't need. Let's turn the points on and do a little bit of editing. And we'll just finish it out down here. And I'm going to turn the points on for all this. Uh, if you notice, this line is a little bit skewed, and I want it to all be lined up nicely. So I'm just going to grab all those points and scale to zero in that direction. And that flattens it right back out for me. I'm going to join these up, run the close command, and it's going to give me, it should give me, should give me a close part. <laughs> Different command in window, and uh, Windows. The close command in Windows gives me a, glad that didn't close the file. That would have been a bummer. All right, let's put this back where we wanted it. I'm going to make a planar surface out of this. Self-intersecting curves were found. That's fine. It sorted it out for me, which is nice. And then I'm going to use the extrude planar curve. Closed planar. Extrude solid. Actually, I want to extrude the surface. And I'm going to use the both option because I want it to go from the center in both directions. And I'm actually going to overbuild this a little bit because I want some contour from the top view. So this is essentially my, my block. So I'm going to delete that. And then the original surface I don't need anymore. <laughs> and then let's go to the top view. And we'll draw a profile here of something that, something like that. Mirror this curve. 
And let's, how do we feel about the end of this? Probably don't want a rotating part that has a sharp edge on it, right? So let's, um, eh, let's go ahead and do it like this and then we'll round it off to something different. Join. You can shut that history warning off, by the way. And then I'm going to use the wire cut, and I'm going to cut, use this curve to cut this object. Oops. Got to keep the right thing. I'm going to keep everything, and then I can just pick what to delete later. So that gives me basically just a bandsaw cut through this thing, right? And go from the top view and the side view. So we have a nice little profile. And then let's go ahead and knock these corners off. I don't really like how much sharpness is on the end of that. So I'm gonna blend the uh, I'm gonna blend the edges. And if we preview this, you can see that this is way too big. So let's set all and let's do like point. Two, five. see what that looks like and it looks like we're still a little big see how the, the profiles are overlapping so I can actually drag a handle and pick about what I want that to be and I can see that about 0.14 is going to get us there so let's use set all and do 0.14 we might want to go a little bit more than that it looks like we can sneak a little bit more so let's set all again And we can even, I want them to get pretty close together, so let's do a little bit more. I think that's going to work. So that knocks that knocks that edge off and gives us a little, little better feel there. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more blending. I'd like to get rid of this sharpness. I'm just going to go ahead and use that same amount. I'm going to do this one as well. I'm going to make this one a little bigger. So that those relate a little more nicely together. And I don't need to worry about this end because it's going to be buried in the model. But let's go ahead and blend the final edge. And I'm going to chain all of this edge and this edge. And 0.25 is way too much, so I'm going to set all. Yeah. Let's do something small. That works. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to chain the edges. I'm going to use the same settings. And that gives us a nicely completed part. I can bring it back up here. I may want to I may want to give a little softness to this, so I'm going to use the blend edges command again. And I think that might be a little bit too much, so let's sharpen let's sharpen that up a little bit. That feels better. I'm going to Boolean these two together, and that gives us our final handle. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to steal this. Tap Alt, get a copy of it. Now I'm going to Boolean it. And then I'm going to use this for my spinner at the other end. I'm going to scale in one direction. Something like that. Might make it a little bigger. Maybe blend off this bottom edge here. And then let's put a little pin through the bottom. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to steal. Shift Command Click. Why go hunting for stuff if you don't need it? Drag, tap option, and that is a surface that I can steal. I know it's centered, I know it's round, I know it does everything that I need it to do, so I'm just going to stick it down here and I'm going to extrude it back up. 
Boolean these two together. Boolean it from this. Oops, I didn't want to delete the inputs. Let's do it again. See that little checkbox there? Don't delete the input. Now I've got separate parts. All right, I can do the same thing here in order to create this axle. Let's go to wireframe. Shift command click. Start dragging, then tap option. That gives you that surface. Shift drag on the scale handle. See how this sub object selection saves so much time hunting for stuff? You can do so much with that and not have to go picking around the interface looking for stuff. Boolean those together, and that gives us the basis of our object. Okay, so, so where are we? 39 minutes in. We've got most of our product. We can start playing with it and start adding cut lines and things like that. Um, is the scale to zero points the command that keeps points in the same axis, sometimes drawing points to get them along different axis? Um, planar is what you want to use in order to get your points to be in the same axis. So if I place a point, like if I place a point in front view and then start drawing in a different view, all of that stuff is going to be in that planar view. It's going to be lined up with that. If it doesn't, the scale to zero thing is, is super useful. And this is an old polygon modeling trick, right? If your curve is going like this and it's all over the place and you want to line these things up with this point, I grab all of this. I relocate my gumball to this point because that's where I want it to be. Actually, let's do it right there. This is where I want to line up to. And then if I scale everything else to zero, boop, it all lines up. If I want it to line up with this point, I select everything but that point, relocate gumball to here, and then scale to zero, boop, they all line up to that point. Super, super useful. If you just want to find the bounding box center of the, of the curve, if you just want it to line up center, pick the entire curve, scale the entire curve to zero. Boop, they all line up. Okay, that's a really, really great trick. And once you start getting into sub Ds in version seven, you're going to use that trick all the time to straighten out your control cages for sub D. All right, so we are we are in the finishing stages here. So let's start breaking this thing up a little bit. So if we look at our sketch, I'm going to, I'm going to break this about right here. And then there's got to be a little drawer or something in here. If it's a coffee grinder, then the grinds have to go someplace and we need to make a little cup for this thing to sit in. If it's a pepper grinder, we'll, it just comes out the bottom and we'll call it a day. But I think because we're we're 42 minutes in and we're at this point. I think we can do coffee grinder because that means it's it's going to be a little bit more complex model. Um, if it was like 9:58 right now, we'd be talking pepper mill and we'd be done. But let's uh, let's let's go full coffee grinder here. So this is a this is a closed object right now. Actually, it's not a closed object right now. So let's make it a closed object just by running the cap command. So now this is a this is a closed object and and you didn't see what happened there but let's undo it and I'll show you what happens. So if we go to shaded view. If I hide this, you can see that the top of this is open, the bottom is closed. If I run the cap command, it just finds whatever planar holes are in this thing and caps them. And this is like a temporary object, a temporary process because I want to have um, chunks of model to work with. I don't want to have to try and go piece surfaces together. So I'm going to wire cut this using this object. And I'm going to keep everything. And so what that does is that gives me, uh, that gives me a nice little chunk, right? And if I hide this, this is still a nice little chunk. Well, what I want to do is I want to use this piece. So I'm going to actually extract this and I'm going to shift drag to scale this in. And then I'm going to make another planar surface. 
You guys are like, you just had a planar surface. Why do you need a planar surface? Watch, just watch. So that's my wall thickness right there. And then check this out. If I extrude this down, now it's going to be too big. But that makes my inside surface. Shift Command click, delete. Shift Command click, drag the scale handle with Shift. And that's the inside of my part. Hook it all up. Yes, the, this is going to be, this will definitely be online later and I'll show you where it's going to be on our, both our YouTube channel and our Vimeo channel. All right, so now I've got, <clears throat> I've got the inside of this done so that if I wanted to put coffee beans in here for a rendering or something like that, I could, but let's deal with the rest of it. So I've got this piece, I've got this piece that I still need to deal with, right? And I can either, I can either shell this or I can do whatever I want. But basically what I'm looking for is I want to make a lap joint. And to make a lap joint, I'm going to grab just this part for now. And I want the top part to be able to fit into this surface right here. So I'm actually going to extract this with a copy. And then I'm going to bring back this, pick this, and then isolate just those pieces. This isolate command is super useful because it allows you to be able to pick something and then hide everything else. But, and this is too big. I don't want it to be that big. So I'm just going to hack it off. So I just want it to sit in there, but I don't want it to be like crazy. And then I'm going to cap this thing because it's now, this is a, this is a solid piece. And this is a solid piece, which I can now pull in together. And then I can do the same trick I did before, which is to extract, not copy, this surface and this surface. I can shift drag scale. Actually, I don't even I don't even need to do this on this one because that one's going to join to the top. But I do want I do want a little wall thickness on the bottom of this. Maybe I'll just offset that later. All right, so let's skip that for now. Let's bring this back. So maybe we're figuring it out along the way. Join this up, isolate this, and now I've got this whole object. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna recap this, and then I'm gonna try and shell it so I can get wall thickness. And let's see if this works. Sometimes shell behaves itself, sometimes it doesn't. I think in this case it probably will, but let's use a small wall thickness like 0.08. Let's see how it goes. So it did the shell, but it reported that the shell was not solid, which means that it did the best that it could, and then it and then it died. It's kind of like the uh, the messenger in Monty Python shows up and says, "Message for you, sir," and the arrow hits him in the back, and then he dies. But instead of just failing and saying no, what it did was it gave us as much as it could, and it looks like. It did a good job on one half, but not so much on the other. And I'm not entirely sure why, but let's take a look at this and see what we can salvage. And because this should be a symmetrical object, I'm gonna just cheat and I'm gonna start a line at zero and I'm just gonna trim this thing in half and then I'm gonna mirror it. Why, why, worry, why worry about who killed who? Let's just let's just move on. So I'm gonna just mirror this. Yes, I know. And it looks like looks like this is suboptimal. So I'm gonna shift click and delete. And then let's just loft those two together. And it looks like there's a broken edge there, so let's fix the edge. If you guys haven't used this before, this is a really cool trick. If you see a situation like this, where you're trying to like run a two rail sweep down an edge or something, and it only picks part of the edge, you can actually come down here to the edge tools and merge edge. And we can merge that edge back together. Now when we do loft, 
it picks the whole edge. You can also split an edge if you only need part of an edge, which is nice. So now we've got this object set up like that. If I bring everything back, hide that. Now I should be able to make a planar surface off of these two. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. All right. Join it up. And now we've got our top shelled with wall thickness with our little lap joint, all that stuff fits together. All right, and so if we were to render this, if we were to make this a transparent material, then we would be able to see the lap joint, it would look good and it would render nicely, okay? So let's make the drawer and we're cruising, cruising, cruising. All right, so I'm gonna go from the right-hand view because I kind of want the drawer to pull out from the front. We're gonna do the same type of thing. I'm gonna draw where I want my cut line and maybe we should follow the contours of the object. Again, I apologize for the construction noise. Hopefully it's not terribly distracting. But if we wire cut this, I want to keep all. I've got a solid little chunk here, which then I can take and make this into a drawer by essentially just coring this thing out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy paste, I'm gonna shift drag like that, and then I'm just gonna poke it up through the top, and then I'm gonna Boolean it out. Delete this, and there's my little drawer. Simple, right? Then we probably need some little rails or something for it to ride in, in and out on. So let's bring the rest of this back. And then let's look at like, how do we, how do we put some little rails on here? Well, there's a million ways to do it, but I'm gonna show you another cool trick. So let's extract this surface, right? And then isolate it. And then I'm going to use split in a way that you might not have used it before. Maybe you have. And I'm going to split it with an ISO curve. And I'm going to split it here. And then I'm going to split it again in a different direction. And I'm going to do here and here. And then I should measure this and know like what the distance is, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. We'll say in a perfect world, we would have figured out the, the, the symmetry and all that kind of stuff, but 952, we got to move. All right, now I'm going to pick these two pieces and I'm going to extrude them up like that. I'm going to go down here and shift command click and delete the bottom surface here. That opens it up. I'm going to join everything back together. Bring my model back. See these are sticking out the end down there. So let's go back one. Actually let's go back a couple. And let's split this in a different direction. And in this case I may actually use a curve here like that and let's split all of this stuff and then let's just grab these pieces and extrude them up go underneath shift command click both of these join it back up See how that's a, it's a cool little way with like, it's very simple and it's, it's easy and you don't have to worry about it. And then I can also do things like this where I can shift command, click this. 
and this one, and then extract so they're separate. And then I can do this whoop, like that so that I've got a Boolean object that I can then use to make my little runners in here. And I actually am going to just scale them up one direction. And then Boolean. Pick the right one. There we go. Delete these. I always keep my Boolean objects just so I can know whether or not they're doing what I want them to do. And so now we can just take this and we can slide it in and out like that, right? Now, there's a couple of cool things we can do here. Um, there's, a, there's a new panel called Named Position. I don't know if you've used this before, but it's a cool little panel. And if I add, if I pick an object and I add a position for it, I'm going to say drawer in. And then I'm going to move this like that, make a new name position, drawer out. This is super useful if you're doing renderings or presentations. Double click, it goes in, double click, it goes out. Nice for doing renderings. If you if you have to do like an exploded view, you can also explode the entire, you can do an assembled view and then you can drag everything apart and make a exploded view. And then if you're doing instruction manuals or things like that, you can do it with each different piece and stuff like that. So this can be pretty extensive. The other thing I'll warn you is, the only thing I'll warn you about is that this is kind of fragile and, and it breaks pretty easily as far as like, if you were to alter this thing, um, if you were to, to trim it or cut it or scale it or do something like that, it, it tends to lose its, its association with this because you've changed the definition of the part that you save the name with. So um, this is kind of an end of the project type of thing. So once you're done and you know you're not making any more edits to the model, actually making edits to the geometry, then go ahead and do your name positions and then save the file. All right. But if I had to cut this or Boolean it or do something, it would lose this, it would lose this association. All right. Anybody use that before? Is that new information? All right. So I think I think we're in a position where we can probably save this. I should have saved it to start with. Let's give it a name. And I'm going to just throw it on my desktop so I can find it later. All right. And uh, and let's let's uh, assign a few materials to this thing. So we've got our plastic. Let's do it a little darker. And I'm going to add just a little speckle texture on this. I'm on a MacBook Pro, older MacBook Pro with kind of a dodgy graphics card in it. So we may or may not get far with the uh, with the rendering stuff. We'll see. The rendering stuff tends to be pretty resource intensive. Let's make a new one, do plastic, and I want it to be pretty transparent, but I also want it to be a little darker color, like that. And throw this on here. And maybe we'll do a different plastic. Maybe we'll do this straight up black and we'll add this to these pieces. But then I want the handle to be a different material. And one of the nice things about V6 is it's got sub object selection. So it doesn't need to be crazy polished and it doesn't need to be super chrome. Let's do, let's do something like 
picking them. And I'm going to shift command drag and I'm going to get all of these surfaces. All right? Let's see. Isolate just that. Shift command drag all of these surfaces. And then I'm going to right click assign to objects. And I can assign a separate material by sub object selection to a poly surface without having, I can assign a separate material to a poly surface without having to explode it. All right, so that gives us our product. Let's go to our named positions panel. Let's pull the drawer out. Let's listen to my dog shaker ears. Gonna hide the sketch. I'm gonna delete all my curves. And then let's, I'm gonna save it one more time. You don't really need to do this on the Mac, but it's a habit. <laughs> and let's throw it into ray trace mode and just take a peek at it. Like I said, this, this computer is probably not ideal for rendering, but we'll get something to take a peek at. And this material probably isn't transparent enough, so let's crank that up. Can't remember which one it was, this one. Let's crank up the transparency like that. And we'll let it just res up a little bit. There we go. That feels a little more clear. You can see down here in the cat in the corner. Seven. Eight <laughs> on my on my PC, which has uh, like thirty five hundred CUDA cores on my NVIDIA graphics card, that goes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve. <laughs> so this could be a while. So I'm gonna call it here um, and just let you guys uh, uh, go if you want. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know. I told you I was gonna tell you where the Vimeo page was, so let's do that. I'll put this in the chat, and then we also have a Vimeo page. This is where all the getting started stuff will be up on our Vimeo page. So it's just Rhino tutorials on Vimeo.